my name is Petra and I'm here today with my lovely daughter Natasha. Hello! And together we're Knit Inc. And it is episode 18. We're at the point in our episodes where we couldn't quite remember what episode it was and that made me so excited <laughs> that we've we've continued this long. Yeah, um, yeah, I we weren't sure if it was 18 or 19, but it's 18. It's 18. Um, so yeah, still in these high teens, um, but still doing it. It's been about a month since our last recording. I think so, and that, that's probably another reason why it was hard to remember what, mm -hmm, it, what episode mm -hmm. number it was. But yeah. Yeah, I think in the summer we'll probably manage one a month or so. Yeah, like everyone, I'm sure you are excited to be able to spend some time with people outside. Um, so we've been doing a lot of that and just lots of things going on. Um, you're, you're still working on the the chicken oh, the corralling chickens. a little we'll, bit. We'll talk about <laughs> the chickens later, but welcome everybody. Oh, yeah, welcome. welcome to our returning viewers. <laughs> yes. Yes, welcome back to our returning viewers and a big hello to new viewers. Um, we're glad you're here. Um, we'd love it if you'd subscribe or leave a comment, whichever button, wherever it is. Like, all of that good stuff. <laughs> yeah. We so enjoy um, reading your comments. It really brings us so much joy. Mm -hmm. And we are getting pretty close to having 4,000 subscribers, oh. which just amazes me that's as exciting. well will that be time for do we want to do a four thousand subscriber giveaway you know i guess we could because i went to our lovely little local well my lovely little local yarn store yesterday driftwood yarn and elizabeth's got like a couple of really lovely um you know local hand dyers mm. and i was perusing some skeins and she's gonna have some uh, she's gonna have some trunk shows okay. and actually that reminds me that um we had a giveaway. I can't exactly remember what reason. I think it was for a thousand subscribers. And we sent the locally dyed yarn. Oh yeah, yeah. Coming yeah. welcome home or something. Yeah. And the wonderful viewer made a couple of pairs of really beautiful socks. Two pairs I, of socks. Yeah. I'll post a photo. Yes. Do please post <laughs> a photo. So thank you for sending us that photo. Those. I think socks, she tagged us on Instagram. That's how yeah, we saw it. Yeah. Yeah. That really um, made me really happy and tagged the, the local, the hand dyer. That particular yarn, and I'm sorry the name escapes me, Natasha will put it here. She makes such gorgeous yeah. colors. I mean, it's up there with La uh, Bien. La Bien Aimé. La Bien Yeah, exactly. Bien okay, so. So, what, should we do a quick little any life updates for the past? month or so yes um, you go first Natasha. okay i did another camping trip this time in the catskills um for a friend's birthday there were a group of us that went um it was like about a four hour drive from boston so it was out oh, there gosh. but we did two nights of camping um i was actually working on this while camping again <laughs> um and I, my friend julia was with us and she knits too and oh. what, and we were always knitting together on these camping trips but we're always like kind of unplugged, not on our phones, and we oh. always forget to take a photo. But I really want to either have her on here and one time when we um, record up in Boston, um, or at least get a photo of us knitting together. Um, that would be really so, lovely. Yeah, Julia, we'd like to have you as a guest. <laughs> yeah. Um, so we, that was an, it was a bit of an adventure because we had to cross some creeks to get to the campsite. So we had to put our car into off-road mode. Um, which it is an SUV, but it's like a luxury SUV. It's not meant for like <laughs> extreme oh. off-roading. And we were a little nervous going through a creek, um, but it was really fun. And we did a little walking to a swimming hole. We went into the town of Woodstock and saw some live music outside. Oh, nice. um, so that was a fun getaway. Um, anything else exciting to talk about? That was kind of the one big trip between now and then. Um, but we're actively planning our trip to England now yeah, since yeah. the UK has opened up to US and EU fully vaccinated people. Mm -hmm. So that's for September. For September, yeah. September, yeah. Which I guess will be here before we know it. Oh, I know. I've started to try to get my act together for that. So anything exciting to talk so, about for you? I haven't been anywhere except for going on local walks with friends. I have been out for a couple of dinners. 
um, outside. I have gotten a pretty good routine with the chickens now. They've really imprinted on us. Um, <laughs> it's much easier to get them inside their run. We, we let them free range most of the time, most of the day. And as a result of that, they haven't been eating enough of their layer food, which is specially formulated to oh. give them enough calcium and protein for egg laying. Oh. So the egg laying has really diminished. I noticed it over the last 10 days. Interesting. Um, they're just not that interested in their layer food. So I'm trying an experiment of fermenting their food. So, you know, our friend Ellen told me that her cousin keeps chickens and he feeds them fermented food and apparently they're the best eggs she's ever had. Interesting. So the first batch of fermented food will be ready tomorrow. So I'm going to try that. Is that a difficult process? No, it's really easy. Oh, okay. You just put some food in a jar, one part food to two parts water, stir it every day and after day three it uses natural yeast. And, oh, okay. Yeah, so it makes the food more palatable, I guess, for them. So would you, are you going to try um having them free range less or maybe like maybe after they have breakfast like make sure they eat in the coop before you before let they, them out yeah yeah we've been trying that we've been trying to keep them in well in their run in their run. a little bit longer in the mornings and then sometimes in the evenings yeah and if we go out so i guess another update is i was actually beginning to go into work mm. two days a week so that impacted their free ranging time but as of last week, because of the Delta variant, um, I've gone back to working fully remotely, oh, just okay. as I was actually getting used to right. and enjoying the hybrid model. Yeah, my yeah. work has started the hybrid model too. Um, they started in the middle of July, and the day I was planning on going in, the night before, they said there was a COVID, there was someone that had COVID in the office earlier that week. So I decided not to go in, and they have since, um, this last week or the week before, I think it was last week, they announced um, it's back to masks in the office, okay. but the office is open, um, but you have to wear a mask and they are considering um, people having to be fully vaccinated to go into the office, oh, yes. which honestly I support. Um, so we, we so, had yeah. still figuring it all out, but still also working from home. Yeah. <laughs> but yeah. Okay. So it is getting hot. So, because I'm wearing my sweater, so I kind of want to start talking about this okay. before I let's, overheat okay. too much. So, um, let's talk it is about August, it's August seventh. I don't know if we said that. Oh, is it August seventh or is it? It's August seventh, and it's not raining. It's actually, yeah, it's actually quite a really nice day. It's a really nice warm day. Okay, so let's move on to um, what we're wearing. What we're wearing, okay. Natasha. You go first. Okay. What are you wearing? Oh, my legs are sticking to this couch. <laughs> okay, I am wearing the Ravello by Isabel Kramer, and this is my second Ravello. Um, the original pattern is a different um, stripe formation where it's, I think, three colors is from the pattern, and you kind of have one block for the yoke, and mm -hmm. then you bring in um, stripes. You do four rows of a contrast color, and then you alter, and then you have a body color to finish off the sleeves and the body. Um, and I had seen a pattern where I liked these thin stripes of just two rows, um, and this is a fingering weight sweater. So it's just, it's, it's not super thin, like the stripes, it's enough to see the color, mm -hmm. um, but it's just kind of fun to get a mix of different colors in. So I had seen a pattern and it was a round yoke sweater and I just wasn't feeling the pattern. So I was like, you know what? I have this fingering weight yarn that I wanted to use and I love my original Ravello. The pattern's written really well and I, I really like raglan sweaters. I think they fit me mm -hmm. well. So I followed the pattern of the Ravello with the stitch count and all of that, but didn't follow the striping. Instead, I used um, some scrap, they're ten, they were 10 gram mini scraps from a swap we did the last, Advent the Advent swap we did last yeah. fall, or last winter, last December, I guess. And you had two skeins of this Magpie Swanky Sock. This is not a this is an extra skein from a different project kit that you had bought and I had this as a backup but mm -hmm. I think I wrote down how many grams I had left let's see I use 1.9 skeins of oh, my swanky sock I weighed it out That's um, really great. so it was great to just use these two skeins and then I did I had fun kind of alternating 
choosing all the different colors. I stuck with like the oh, orange, yeah. brown, brown, tan. I did one stripe of turquoise. Um, this is an ode to my first Ravello where the body is the turquoise, oh, that's really um, sweet. which that's I kind of thought was fun. And I love the way this fits. Um, it's a good for a summer evening sweater. Right now mm -hmm. I'm boiling, so I'm gonna take this off in a second. Um, and I think another, I might've done, I did a twisted one by one rib. Um, on the instead of a garter stitch and I think in the pattern they have you Isabel has you um, pick up and do the garter edge after but I didn't do that for my first one and I also didn't do that for the second one I just cast on and did a couple one by one ribbing not a ton it's a very thin edge um, and I think I cast on size two and I might have increased the sleeves to size three yes that's what my um well, you made some nice notes on Ramory. That's great. Yeah. Because you may go back. I mean that's a I'm trying. And then it yeah. says I used about eight grams of mini scraps in about six colors because I didn't actually end up using every single scrap um from the minis. Um, Only eight grams? Eight yeah. No, that's not in total. Well, no, not in total. Eight oh. grams of each color. Oh, of each color. So there that were ten gram sense. minis and okay. I, I ended up because I didn't want to end up having not enough for a stripe. So okay. I did the whole body and then I did the sleeves. So the body oh, I see. so I mimicked you wanted to, I wanted to match. match. Oh, yeah. Yes, so my sleeves match. My sleeves and body match. And they, they clash with your shorts a little bit. Oh yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Definitely clash with my shorts. But oh, whatever. Um, it, that's like a Zoom thing, isn't it? You're looking all the yeah, way yeah, yeah, on yeah. top. You wait till I stand up. Um, <laughs> well, I'm going to take this off in a second because I'm hot. Um, but I think that's all I have to say about it. Um, you did helical knitting because you, you... Oh, are... yes, yes, yes. Oh, that was something I just want to bring up. Actually, okay. Yes. I'm going to take this off and then hold Talk it up closer. About it. Yeah. Okay. Okay, so... Um, I did helical knitting for the swanky sock, not for my stripes, but um, because one color, and I think I talked about this in the last episode, you did. one color was a little cooler than the others. So the way helical knitting is, um, uh, Babbel's Traveling Yarns has a really good video tutorial on this and I'll link it below, mm -hmm. but it's a great way to um, alternate skeins of hand dyed yarn without having like doing it in the same place that kind of creates a jog or like a weird type of seam when you're kind of rotating through and the way it works briefly because I'm not going to give a full tutorial um is you knit to three stitches before your last um before your other ball of yarn and then you slip those three stitches and knit around and then when you get to the part of your next round you slip three stitches before that um, and ball you, of yarn and you, and you keep doing it you and just you just drop, drop it. Yeah, so each fancy. time you're, ro you're going three stitches back. So the only thing is because um, these are thin stripes and in some pieces, places, because when you're slipping those three stitches, you're actually only knitting nine rounds. I should say I was oh. doing, I was doing 10 rounds in between each stripe. But when I'm slipping those three stitches, those three stitches are slipped and they count for two rounds, right? So, but it was oh, actually yeah. only nine. So in some places, it kind of pulled a little. So oh, I see. you can kind of see here, it's a little thinner. Actually, it's hard for me to point and hold this. Do you mind holding it up? Oh yeah, I, no, I can do this. Um, it is, see, it, it's kind of, it's very difficult to tell. I can see it if I look closely, but there's a little bit of a, a little bit of a wave blip there it's totally subtle and i think and you can see here it's a little thinner um it's it's really not noticeable at all no unless no, you're like dissecting it really closely you know what i think it actually makes it look really interesting and unique um it feels amazing yeah, you, yeah. it's you've blocked it and the knitting is so even. It's really a gorgeous way, Thank Natasha. You. I'm well really happy done. with it. I think mm -hmm. it's great for the fall. Oh, it's beautiful, yeah. So yeah, helical knitting, I apologize, I didn't explain that super well, um, but, but it's, it's, it's great for hand-dyed yarns and um, super easy skates. alternating skeins. And I did it on the sleeves as well. Oh, you did, okay. Yeah. Yeah, I've done helical knitting too and it's absolutely amazing. I wish I'd known about it years ago. Mm. Yep. All right, so that was a lot. What are you wearing? I am wearing something that I made in 2018. It's called the Mary Lynn, sorry, I have to, Mary Lynn 
by Astrid Schramm. Okay. And it's knitted um, in shoppable El Lineo, which is 100% linen. It's a chain. You, you have That's a tank top. That's what I knit my red tank top in from last episode, which I did. I should have brought that home. I did um, make that a little longer. So oh, I good. did fix so that. You did, and you're yeah. happier with it now? Yeah, yeah. And the colorway is called Tinte, and it's, it's a blue. So I knit this back in the spring of 2018 as a store sample for Driftwood Yarns. Um, I'm just going to quickly stand up. It's, it's a pretty simple A-line um, summer top with a I suppose you would call this a boat neck. It is knit yeah. top down like with a garter, a, a garter ridge. The sleeves have a have a garter edge, and you do increasing. Oh, that's really nice. In a gar in in garter panel here to make it a line, and I find that at this stage of my life and my shape, that this kind of an a line top is comfortable and I think relatively flattering. Yeah, it looks for good. me to wear. Um, so it fits me pretty um with zero ease at the top and then then i have some you know a little bit of positive ease and i'm wearing cargo shorts which do not go with it <laughs> but we're doing the we look good at the top hopefully not so much on the bottom <laughs> so yeah that's what i'm wearing and yeah. i haven't i realized that this is the first time i'm wearing it this summer oh wow I you know. were wearing that a lot when you first finished it i feel like yeah, uh, yeah, I, I definitely wore it a lot in 2018 and 19, probably. Mm. So that's oh. what I'm wearing. So, nice. shall we talk about some FOs? Finished objects, I think so. Inside you out. go ahead, Natasha. <clears throat> um, this will probably transition to a whip, so I'll hold on to that. All right, so I have a couple hats. Mm. Um, I have my co-worker is having a baby girl in September, so I did a little hat for her. Um, oh gosh, this is with my, so I keep using those sheepies, little, little, little minis, little minis. You're working my way through the set, which is interesting because somebody on Ravelry asked me if I would sell the set. Oh, it's definitely been picked through. <laughs> there's just, not much, there's no, not a whole lot. Because yeah. they're not available anymore, I guess. Oh, they're super cute. Oh gosh, that's a really and this is, clever way of, mar that you yeah. did the marling. So I, yeah, I, they're both marled. Um, with some contrast. So the fun thing about these minis is there's so, some of them are a kind of mixed of two colors. You can see the top is like the turquoise and the pink, mm -hmm. and then the bottom here is purple and turquoise. So they, um, they kind of, you can see here where I was rotating skein by skein, they, they blend into each other really nicely. So this is for a girl born in September. This is for a boy um, due at the end of October. Really cute, um, attention. and this is just a free pattern, like fam, like hats for all the family or something. Um, oh, okay. I have, I will put the link below, and I have a link in my Ravelry page. Um, this one I decided to do the little, what the loop, you, the little loopy thing, which is kind of cute. Um, and then I have another hat. Oh, so my wow. friend's mom is fighting cancer, and I made this hat, but I'm not sure I'm gonna give it to her. It's a little scratchy. Oh, is it? Yeah. Oh, you used the sock yarn. I, yeah. Oh, yeah, no, you can't I, give it to her. Yeah, I, this is, so I held two yarns together. I held, the, they were scraps from you. Yeah. This one's really soft. This is a single ply gray of something. Oh, yeah, this is. Seems like Madeline Tosh, maybe? This is a Madeline Tosh, um, I'm not sure what she calls this now, but it's a, it's a single yeah, it's a single fingering weight. And then this is some sock yarn that you had left over. Oh, that's like a Reggie, a durable sock yarn. Yeah. You know what? It didn't occur to me that so it wouldn't be it's soft. It's not super soft. I blocked it with a ton of conditioner and Did stuff. You? And it could be like a loose beanie or or a rib. But I'll find someone else to give this to, and I will make another one for my friend's mom. Or it can be, you know, the folded rib. So someone yes. else will get this. It'll go into the random gift thing. But... It was, um, this was the waffle, I think this was a free pattern, waffles something or other. I'll put the link below. Um, okay. It was, you know, the, the waffle pattern where you um, knit one row, then knit two, purl two for the other row. So it's kind of a fun, I don't know who, who's going to yet, but. It might be a Christmas gift or something. Yeah. yeah. Um, oh yeah, I see the pattern. It's nice, Natasha, you did a really nice job. And I have some yarn picked out to make a hat for her too. Um, I can't quite remember what I had 
She wanted purple, right? Yeah, which was great because you I have, have a lot, lot of purple. purple. <laughs> but you're but we'll figure right. we'll figure we'll, we have we'll, other purple we'll yarn go, to figure out we'll for her. We'll go through yeah. my stash and yeah. pick up some. Actually, I think I know exactly what I'm looking at it now. Some um, soft, softer yarn. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Well, that's so those a good are my line. hat fos. What do you have? Yeah, I, I last time I said I'd finish my three summer tops, and I haven't finished any of them. <laughs> I did finish a pumpkin Halloween doggy sweater. Oh, this which is fun. I am worried. It's called, it's the Lucky Dog sweater pattern, knit for Pearl Soho. And I'm going to have to check my notes. Oh, yeah. This by is... Soul something. And this is soft. This is Cash Merino super. You know who this would fit? My friend Corgi. Really? Yeah. So it's. Um, the Lucky Dog sweater and the design is Soul Salvo for, for Pearl Soho. And I use this pattern, the smallest size, to make um, little strudel in this color too. This is this is for Maya. Yeah, I mean, I, Finn is the corgi. I don't know if he needs a sweater. Well, I've, I knit it to the measurements, but um, it, it, it could be shrunk if it's too big. Yeah. Anyway, this is the underside. There's ribs, so there's a lot of give in it. You yeah. Know? Um, and the pattern is Feels actually really nice. The pattern's actually designed for worsted weight, and this is a DK. So I was winging it a little bit, mm. but I knitted it to the measurements. It, it might be a little bit long um, of an existing doggy sweater. So we'll see. <laughs> if it's too big for her then um, your aunt can either shrink it or give it to another doggy. Yeah. yeah. So that's my FO. Um, and then I just need, needed some really simple knitting and I didn't have anything that I could just pick up. So I mm. made three little dishcloths out of this, um, what is it? It's 100% worsted weight cotton yarn mm. and it's um, Lily, sugar and cream these are good like easter time if you yeah. want to theme your dishcloths to the season <laughs> so i'm going to give one to my mom because i was working on it when i was talking to her one day and then i made a little one it could be for washing your face or maybe it can even go for a little baby as a baby gift for a little oh, yeah that's cute baby washcloth and i've oh, got yeah. maybe i'll swipe it and give it for this little baby girl oh yeah and i've got just a little bit left from a hundred gram and I'm making up. Cause mom said, these seem really big and they were a bit big. So mm -hmm. then I'm knitting, I'm knitting them all in um, different sizes. So, so that's it for my FOs. Yeah, I hear you on the something easy. That's why I started those hats um, because I had some complicated stuff going on too. Yeah, sometimes you just need something meditative to pick up. Yeah, and those hats I can just Oh yeah, you can just whip those hats out, huh? Mm -hmm. Nice, Natasha. Um, okay, so I think that brings us to whips. Mm -hmm. Yeah? Works in progress, yeah. Yeah. Why don't you go, Natasha? Okay, so I told you I started this, and it's not quite a tale of woe, but I think it's going to be a, t a tale of woe. <laughs> um, okay, this is the Fold Lines by Nora Gone, um, which is a, it's a Brooklyn oh. tween pattern. I hope this isn't a tale of woe. I've not heard about this. Well, you'll see. Okay, so I'm using the Shibui Knits Echo, which you got for me, which is really nice. Mm -hmm. So I cast on for the size, I'm all tangled, size two. It's bottom up, knit in pieces. I cast this on on my birthday. So it's bottom up, knit in pieces, um, and it's kind of like a drop shoulder. And it has this like star pattern um oh yeah it's a gorgeous pattern. done it's not done by cables it's done with kind of twisting stitches and oh, um, okay and it's yeah I, it's fun so here's my thing it's big it's really big this is the back really and i nice didn't sweater for me yeah <laughs> but i think it's actually going to be even too big for you like it's huh it's pretty big Wow. And I didn't even finish the back. This is the back. So the sleeves are dropped down to be like here. Oh, I see. Yeah. But I think, you know, we're, I'm so used to knitting things like slightly cropped now. This is like, this is going to go down to like oh yeah, really low. And I think it would be even big for you too. 
it would be kind of like a sweatshirty. Yeah, but the thing is, I don't want it to be that. Mm -hmm. I you, want, you it, want it like your your Ravello. Don't yeah. You? So I have cast on. Oh gosh, the nice. size small. I did not swatch, <laughs> and it's biting me in the. You know what? But well, and I I got okay. So I put. I do this thing um, where I'll put a, so I have eight, eight of these skeins, and I'll put a little stitch marker when I've used a skein. So oh, okay. this is, this was to my first skein, this was to my second, and then this, this stitch marker is just to mark the center. So this is about two and a half skeins. Like look how freaking, and this has so much stretch. Like oh, this yeah. wow. is huge. Look how so, big this is. Okay, Natasha. Um, <laughs> take it easy. Um, so I was I was like, oh, I'm gonna end up playing yarn chicken if I'm using two and a half, probably two and three quarters for the front and back. Okay. Then that leaves me, you know, like one skein for each sleeve, which might be okay, but it also might be just mm -hmm. short. And I was like, oh, and then the sweater is gonna be too big, and the sleeves are gonna be too short. It's such a shame. It's really so. It took it me. It's taken me about a month to do this. Wow. Maybe three and a half weeks. Three. We'll call it three and a half weeks. I but and it's, it really does look like paper folding. Doesn't yeah. It? So it's such a cool design. Yeah. Um, so. And mm. the, so the point of what I was going to say about marking the skeins, I got to the first skein and I was like, "Ooh, this is going to be too big, isn't it? I'm just going to keep going. This pattern is so much fun. I'm going to keep going." Then I got to the second skein and I was too. like, okay, this is definitely too big, but I'm just going to keep going. I'm just going to keep going. <laughs> and then I started doing the bind off and I was like, I can't keep going. <laughs> Gosh, Natasha, so, I know. I, know. I also, um, so, so the thing is, I want to say this pattern is hard to modify because it's, you have to, you know, the stitches the mat up with the piece. pattern. It's yes. not like when you're doing, you know, just stripes or just knitting you can just, I could just started to like, I could have started decreasing yeah. easily. And then I was like, oh, maybe I'll just do the back, the size small, but then things aren't going to line up because even at the top, the, um, the pattern goes into the seam and it's just not going to line up. And I'm not going to like that because the stitch count isn't mm -hmm. going to be off. Right. So I was like, I couldn't modify this in the way that I would have for another pattern. Um, so that's so, so I gotta, I gotta knit the okay. other side. And I think that this, I think the size down is still gonna be kind of a roomy sweater. Um, I'm also, so the pattern has you do, let's see, the, this is one, besides the ribbing, mm -hmm. um, this is one pass of the pattern, right? Okay, one repeat. One repeat. So that have you do <clears throat> two and a I half see. repeats before you um, cast on some stitches for the sleeve. So I'm just okay. going to do two repeats. So I'm going to eliminate a half of a repeat. And then I also, the ribbing is three inches and I did it two and a half this time. Oh, I see. So that's going to bring me down about at least three or four inches. Okay. And this, I measured this, um, you so this is 16 inches from my underarm and normally I'm like closer to like a 12 oh is gosh. like where I'm like around. Wait, so like I'm have... eliminating about three, three and a half um, inches with this modification. So I'm doing the size down from this, a little bit shorter on the hem ribbing and then eliminating half a repeat before um, doing the sleeves and I think that will fit me better. Um, the size down is is 22 stitches less. So that's one. It's like one one, I know. one of these across. Yeah, okay. Yeah. That makes sense. So I it mm -hmm. is I'm it's not a complete tail of bow, but I'm gonna like it so much better by doing this, you know? And yes, I should have swatched i should have stopped after the first game but you know what i have a handle on the pattern i'm using the knit companion app on my ipad um which you can use yeah. on your phone too where you can highlight um where the you row. the rows yeah, we I are which is great too. for charts yes. um and there was one other thing i was going to say about 
Oh, so I can't memorize the whole pattern, mm -hmm. but by row I can. So can you, you read it once you've made a panel? You can you, probably read it, right? Well, I can. I can kind of read it, and I do have my stitch markers in between each repeat, which yeah. helps a million. So I can memorize, and it's knit back and forth. And I was like, oh, should I try and modify this and knit in the round? Mm -hmm. But I'm gonna use this. I'm gonna knit the skein I have wound up and I'm gonna kind of use this as a guide while I'm knitting this just to size it up at least through like one and a half skeins or so before I unpick that. Um, so that is my whip and I love the yarn. It's a mix of silk and merino, isn't it? Yeah, 52% silk, 48% fine merino and it is Japanese so it's themed with the Olympics. That's what I've been doing the past two weeks. Oh, I've been watching a ton of the Olympics. Oh yeah, yes. Yeah, yeah. Um, Actually, I've been watching quite a bit of Olympics yeah. too. Let's talk about Tom Daly. <gasps> Tom Daly! How did, did we not bring that up in the beginning? Oh my God! I got so many messages from him, but he is so cute. You I was, got messages from him. Yeah. Well, my no, not from him. Shoot. Oh gosh. I got messages. People were sending me. Um, oh, messages about him. Messages about him. him. Yeah, 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 yeah. Oh, okay. Um, he revealed his cardigan. Did you see yeah. that on Friday? Yeah. Which is amazing color work. He brought Italia. so much. He brought so much yarn to Tokyo. I was so impressed. <laughs> also, he only started knitting at the beginning of the pandemic. Wow. I like looked through. I'm pretty sure that's what his Instagram said, um, which I thought was pretty admirable. How much he's a just become an immediate lifestyle knitter, and yes. b he's really talented. Like he's knitting all sorts of things. And, and did you know that he was knitting for charity? Yeah. He knit that cardigan for um, a cancer, ch a UK cancer charity, yeah. which I thought was wonderful. Mm -hmm. I'm wondering if a lot more people in England are going to start knitting now. Hopefully. Because every time I listen to BBC radio, every time they mention Tom Daly, they mention his knitting. No. I know. And I love the fact that he's like kind of normalizing, like you can do that. And you knitting anywhere. Knitting yeah. anywhere. And like, yeah, you are still paying attention. Like he's cheering on his teammates. And I looked at a photo, he's sitting there knitting, other people are on their phone. It's mm -hmm. like, you know. Yes, it's, you can be much more present knitting something meditative than uh, being, on, be, your phone. being on your phone. Yeah. Yeah. So I know, it's, it's been really fun. Yeah. Uh huh. Oh, shoot, I, I forgot I wanted to mention at the beginning, but hopefully That's you made okay. it half an hour through and caught yeah. that fun stuff. If you have not seen Tom Daly, his Instagram is made by Tom Daly. Um, and he was, he was in the Olympics, I think at least in Rio, I'm not yeah, sure. This was his third Olympics. This was his third Olympics, which is but amazing. it was his, his first gold for, um, the, the synchronized diving with his partner. Um, the two of them got gold and with his diving, diving part partner, partner, not his, his life real life, life partner, partner. Yes. his real life partner and him and Tom had a baby, um, through a surrogate and, um, the reaction from his partner, who they're married, um, he was so excited when Tom Daly won the gold. He was like screaming. That was <laughs> that. I mean, it's really sad that the athletes can't have their family yes. there, but they have done a decent job of showing, you know, the Zoom or Teams um, viewing. Yeah. And the reactions from the families have been pretty great. When John and I watched, we're always getting emotional with the families. Oh, I know. He was so happy. You know, it's so great. It is great. And he won a bronze medal yesterday or oh, the day for, before. for his solo diving. diving. He might yeah. have won a gold in that solo before, but he hadn't for the, the, the synchronized. And I, you know what? I missed that. I was... That was earlier on. That was in the first week. Yeah. Yeah. Okay, so what are you working on? All of your summer knits? Yes, I'm ho I'm on a huge sleeve island, and I'm hopping from sleeve I from one <laughs> sleeve island to another sleeve island. So maybe I'll just talk about the one that I'm knitting. Okay. Which I haven't had my hair cut because I haven't finished the sweater for my hair. So. <laughs> I actually got my hair cut. It's... Oh, it does look nice and healthy, but I'm getting there. So this is the Duchesne, and I am making. And was that by again? Oh, who is that by? I'm going to have to look that up. I'll put it below. I'll put it below. Don't worry about it. Okay. I'm knitting it in um, Pima Cotton and Linen Blend, Hampton. The The yarn is called Hampton and it's by Cascade Yarns. And I think they just do color, they just do numbers. It's number four, this light gray. And last time I finished the front and back and blocked them. And so I, I seamed them. So modifications, I'm, I'm using, um, I'm making it at a tighter gauge 
and um, I also did not swatch. <laughs> anyway, so I, I joined together and I made one sleeve. It's a pretty short sleeve because it's dropped shoulders mm. um, pretty quickly. And I am using these funky needles. Um, they oh, are, yeah, Chaigu Twist. I, I, start, I tried them for the first time and I was trying to see what the cable. So they are shorter than nine inch circulars, <laughs> right? I don't know what he would say for this. This cable is, um, oh, it's, it says it in, it's a, you're gonna have to cut this out, sorry. I think it might be a six inch cable, two, two and three inch. It doesn't, it doesn't tell you what size the cables are. Anyway, um, it's, it's, it's a really small circumference. And at first, when I started knitting with these tips, I didn't really like it because they're actually he pretty heavy. Mm. They're short and heavy. And I haven't really been knitting with metal, metal needles for a long time now because I use the Licker wooden needles. Oh yeah, I like those. Um, they, those are kind of my go-to needles. And then I've got the shorter knit picks, I guess the five inch. But anyway, now I'm on the second sleeve and I'm, I'm getting used to them and it is so efficient really on a sleeve to just be able to go round and round and round and not have to keep shifting, not have to keep yeah. shifting, especially on a stocking stitch sleeve. And yeah. so they come with an even short. So, so I'm using three inch tips. There's also two inch tips. I don't know if I'd be able to knit with two inch tips. Mm. There's almost nothing to hold. And then two pretty short cables. Um, I'm using the longer cable, but there is, you, you can buy a set of these and they come with a connector so you can connect the two cables. These actually don't come with a connector, although I thought that they did, but Elizabeth set me up yesterday with a connector. Oh, okay. And I had, these are US size eight, which is five millimeter that I need. I knit this in, in, um, five millimeter size needles. I had also ordered the US size six, which I think is four millimeter needles on some project that I finished the sleeves on now. Um, but anyway, I will say for knitting short circumference, yeah. these are really efficient. I mean, I think I'm gonna finish this today. Oh, awesome. So that's one sleeve island, and then I can make a hair appointment and get my hair cut. Nice. Um, and I would like you to try this on to see how it fits. Okay. Because I'm actually, I didn't do short rows in the back and I'm a little concerned that it might be rising up in the back. Oh, uh, but um, hopefully this will fit Pam. I think she's probably a little about your size, or maybe a little bit smaller. Yeah, than Yeah, she might be smaller than me. Yeah. So that's that's one of my sleeve islands. Okay. Are you working on anything else? Yeah, I have one more whip to talk about. How okay. many more whips do you have? I have quite a few. Um, Why don't you do another one? Okay, I'll do my other sleeve island, which is the Venus. Oh, okay, I have a sign for that. Yeah, by Martin Story. And I think that this is eligible for the needles at the ready. Um, let's hear it for the boys knit along, which is oh. make something by a male designer or male d dyed yarn. Oh. And I'm not completely sure if that knit along is still going on. Oh, okay. But it definitely was going on for a while. And last time we podcasted, I had done the back, which is this, and I've blocked it. Nice. Since then, I have finished the front. Nice. And I don't know where it is at the moment. Blocking? No, it might be on the dining room table. I, I was just gathering it when you arrived. Are you, is this a ruse? Um, can we, I'm just going to pause and get it. Do you okay. mind? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay. I'm glad that I found the front that I, oh yes. So it's not a complete ruse. So let's hold up both pieces here. So, yeah. So, um, this is knitted in pieces like the, is it the paper fold? Fold lines. Fold lines. Okay. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's, it, it's basically the same, except it's a slightly lower neckline and it's for the front and back? For the front and back. Okay, yeah, yeah, this is the back. I can see, yeah, there's the difference, yeah. Yeah, so I I knit this, this... Um, and that's blocked too? This is blocked too, and it's a 120 row repeat pattern. But 
now I've kind of really into the rhythm of it and I am making it out of Rowan Creative Linen, which I think I may have mentioned before, this is actually the yarn that the pattern was designed in. It's one of the rare times oh, that's when I'm exciting. using. Um, and I'm, I'm making the second size, which is the medium. So I did start, and I, I had bought four. I thought last time I said three, but actually I had four 100 gram balls and or skeins and each one of these used one and maybe a quarter or something oh wow okay so uh, so the sleeves are knit flat and i'm knitting both at a, both at the same time because it really does help when you're doing a lace pattern so you, you you look at the row and you do the same row on both sleeves i think it's much more efficient than right. knitting one sleeve and then going back especially for a 120 row repeat pattern yeah i mean 120 row repeat pattern it sounds overwhelming but it really isn't because there's a lot of you know the side panel is repeated it's just that the side panel versus the middle panel is repeated at a different rate okay yep so i was knitting the sleeves to pattern when i got to about where i am now and i thought you know what these are way too wide and i don't want baggy white mm -hmm. sleeves so I ripped out, I did a Natasha and I ripped out and, um, and I started again. Now I'm worried they might be too small, but I'm going to, I like my sleeves here to be kind of not tight, but not too much positive ease. Did that, did it grow with blocking? Actually, it really didn't. It's, oh, okay. um, it's a cotton linen blend. Oh, okay. Um, but now I'm going to increase the rate of increasing. And the great thing about knitting two at a time is that you're increasing at the same time and hopefully the sleeves will be the same, right. unlike my other top where the sleeves are different. Yeah. So I'm, I'm making progress. This is how much yarn I have for each one. Okay. I really hope that I don't have to do serious yarn chicken because since I'm knitting them bottom up, you can't just like say, oh, okay, I'm just gonna have three quarter length sleeves now. Um, because also the, the sleeves are going to be a sleeve cap and fitted in. It's kind of like the old fashioned way that I mm. used to knit, Swiss, knit, knit sweaters because you can see there's shaping here. Right. So the sleeve is going to be shaped to fit in. Right. So if I'm running, if I'm close to running out of yarn, I'm going to go on Ravel oh. and see if I can get some. Yeah, hopefully. But I think, I, I think it'll be okay. I think I, well, I think what it's going to be close. Well, I've got some. I've oh, you've got, got some long tails. I've got okay. a long tail that I'm going to use for seaming. And you know what? I'm if I, I'm sure I'll find something similar to this to seam. Okay. I'm not worried about seaming too much. And the sleeves so, are knit in the round or flat? No, flat. Right. Okay, you might have said that right, right. I didn't actually say it, but I'm using the prim needles, which are super light, which is why I think those metal chai goo seem so heavy to me. Right. Another reason. Probably. So I, I usually knit a little bit on this now every evening that's my first knitting i pick up when i'm kind of fresh yeah and then i move on to some something more meditative after i've had a glass of wine and i'm tired <laughs> yeah so those are the two summer tops and then shall i just roll into the third summer sure top roll right in where that's another sleeve island that i have not begun and it's not because i didn't want to but because i didn't have any yarn Oh, because I had used up all the yarn and you had promised me some leftovers. And I forgot and them. And you forgot it. But I brought them home this time. Thank you. So this is Cascada, which is the same yarn that you made um, your fold line tank. My you, outline tank. Your old, oh, sorry, I'm And there's confused. a lot of lines. There's a lot of lines. <laughs> My outline um, But tank, just yeah. show what the difference blocked versus not blocked. Well, oh yeah, yeah, well this is blocked, mine's blocked. Mine's not blocked. And mine's, this is size three needle. And this is size four. And this is, a, a let's go a little gauge. closer. I don't know if you can see the difference in real, in the, through the camera or not, but. And it has this lace panel. Yeah. So I finished the body. Wow, really nice. The, it's, that's the, um, the A-line, another A-line shaped top. Yep. But this time there's a lace panel and it's asymmetric. The lace panel is only on one side. And the pattern actually, if I was following the pattern, I'd be casting off now for the sleeves. 
And actually, so talking about modifying, so I am gonna make sleeves and you brought me some yarn. I brought you 75 grams of one skein. So this is the yarn, it's Pollock Juniper Moon, Moon yarn and it is, what is it? I think it's silk and linen. It's another, it's another silk and linen blend. So I'm gonna use this to make some sleeves that are about this length, a modification. So talking about modifying patterns, I wanna give a really, really special shout out to a couple of podcasters, another mother and daughter, Helen and Rosie. Helen's the daughter, Rosie's the mom. Mm -hmm. And they podcast out of Northern England and they are called the the fiber i think their podcast is called the fiber tribe mm -hmm. but you also might be able to find them by the diddy stitcher mm -hmm. so helen is a and they have a, they have a floss tube helen is a stitcher she does these amazingly elaborate like cross stitch and embroidery yeah absolutely phenomenal and I, I used to do a lot of cross stitching and embroidery too i might get back into it yeah when i retire and rosie is a knitter and she in her shout out she said what she really liked about our podcast is that we modify patterns right she said she shouldn't be afraid to modify patterns modify your patterns rosie <laughs> everyone modify <laughs> your patterns make them to fit you and to yeah. suit you you know think about patterns as recipes that they're sort of a guide and, yeah and as you as you knit more and more things for yourself, especially with garments, I think, mm -hmm. you'll realize what, what fits you, what you like, and then you can just take bits and pieces from yeah. designs and, and, and really make them your own. And it, isn't that one of the amazing things about knitting for yourself is right. that you can knit exactly what you would like versus, you know, going into the high street and buying something that you sort of like. Yeah, and I think, so, you know, obviously some patterns are easier than others to modify. Right. You, you've shown um, that today. Yeah. Um, and, you know, sometimes the modifications don't work out, but mm -hmm. it's all a learning process. And I think, um, you know, one thing that's easy is maybe like, you know, the ribbing length or knit until, you know, X number of inches before you split for the sleeves. Yeah. You can always increase or decrease sleeve length, if, especially if they're top down. Yes. are easy to modify um sometimes i've done in between sizes you know trying yes. to figure out what the repeat is um but there's definitely with more experience and i even go back and you know reference old patterns for some things about um how what they've works. done a certain yeah some things that are, work a certain way um that i like to remember so yeah yeah so thanks so thanks Thanks you too um, over in Northern England for the shout out. Really yeah, and I've gone it. back and I've watched some of your early episodes and they are really, really charming. Um, so we're going to put a little link in and if you would like to watch uh, an English mother and daughter, if you're also interested in stitching, then um, it's kind of a nice change of pace. Agreed. Agreed. Yeah. Okay, so anyway, this might be, I'm worried that this might be too big. Oh, yeah. Um, this is but big. I'm just going to finish this. Talking about modifying, I didn't modify, and maybe I should have. <laughs> but you know what? I was thinking, this is going to be a gift, and I have three possible people. Oh. If, if it's too big for me, then um, I'm not going to say, but... Do you have an yeah. order of who gets first pick? No, no. Just who it might suit, depending on what it actually looks like when it's finished. Mm. Um, and you know, as you were talking about your, is it the fold lines? Fold lines, yeah. Fold lines. I know you, you, you're mentally prepared to rip out that back, but I was also thinking, couldn't we have thought of making it for someone that it would fit? <sighs> the thing so much is that in that bag. that pattern has been in my queue oh, since it really came out this. in like twenty. Yeah. I think it was twenty eighteen. It might have been twenty seventeen. So not a super long time. But I've had my eye on that pattern for a long time. I see. For a, while, for a while. And it's a DK yarn. And I feel like sometimes DK yarn isn't super easy to... It's not as... It's not what I have most of in my stash. Mostly oh, I've got like don't. fingering and other weights. So when you gave me this DK weight yarn, I was like, yes, I have a DK weight yarn. And I wanted to do it in a light color because oh, you can see the pattern. Oh, yeah, more. that's true. You can see the lines. You know, so yes. it was like okay. having a DK weight yarn that was, was a light perfect. color. It was just like, that's what it 
it was meant to be. I and see. I've been wanting it. So I thought about it too. I thought about, oh, you would like it. And then I was like, well, then I'm going to want to make another one for myself. And then when I saw how big it was, I was like, it's still going to be too big for you. Mm -hmm. So okay, sweetie. I did think about yeah, finishing okay. it for you. I did. but Well, no, I did. Maybe not me, but someone else I was thinking. Yeah. But anyway, oh, good, you know, good on you, Natasha, that you you are you, you're gonna make it work and you're gonna, you're gonna make, make it, it into a beautiful sweater that yeah. you love even if you have to unpick and let's face it you know you were knitting it when you were watching the olympics, olympics. And, and i'm knitting ahead. a smaller size now so it'll, it's it'll gonna go, go quicker right. okay <laughs> it's gonna be shorter and it's one less re 22 stitch repeat each time um and i knit the ribbing smaller so it's it's gonna go quicker i commend you i commend you for that Okay. All right, so, so I have, I have one ahead. more whip that's also a tale of well. An oh, actual gosh, tale of Natasha. Well. Okay, so this is my outline tank. So another non-swatching situation, you know. <laughs> is there a lesson in here somewhere? Yeah, I mean. Some Should we take the time I to probably, swatch? I probably swatch, like, not as much as 75% as the time, but more than 50% of the time. Do you? So maybe 60% of the time. I probably swatch 20% of the time. So... <laughs> I didn't swatch for this, and this is this is DK, right? No, we go back and forth. I think it's more like sport weight. Okay, so this is a cotton. It's this cool. is the linen. This is the linen silk blend, the Juniper Moon Pollock, and it's called Summertime. The color is called Summertime. Yeah. And so this is the outline tank by Jessie May. So I did not swatch for this. I cast on for the size two and you do the ribbing in size three and then you go up to size four for the body. And I remember I was like two inches in and I switched down to size three needles. This ended up being, I being, it's really wide mm -hmm. and the straps are really long. So I went back and made the straps long, uh, sure, shorter, sure. but it's still too wide. And the pattern, it is meant to be kind of oversized. And cropped. Maybe. And cropped, but it's the I don't mind the length, but it's it just it's like you see this it's not flat you see this armpit right. situation, right? And even though I made the sleeves like sleeves, these aren't really sleeves. Straps. Straps. Shorter, it's still just not it's not fit. Now it looks out of proportion because yes. you've got short you've yes. got fitted arm holes and, and I, the top is really, really baggy. Yeah, so but I really like the pattern. So this is supposed to be fingering weight and I used a thicker yarn <laughs> and knit up a size than I probably should have. So 100% user error. So <laughs> I, the part here, these are done with drop stitches and I it was those. so fun to do. Yes. So I was like, oh, I'll rip back and just do some decreases, like still have the wider at the bottom and kind of make it A-line. But with these drop stitches, I just wasn't sure if I was gonna do it right. And honestly, this is a really quick knit. Um, because there's no sleeves and it's just stocking, stockinette in the round. Um, and then the sleeves are all, the straps are really, really quick too. It's just like mm. these tiny triangles. So you gifted me. Um, no, you, you bought that yarn. No, no, this yarn. Oh. Yeah, but oh. you gifted me this this shibui cone oh, for, your with, birthday. for my birthday which is fingering yes and is another linen silk blend so this is actually fingering so i was like and you gave me two skeins which is basically enough perfect look at this this is obviously ill-fitting <laughs> um so, so i i only got you sorry to interrupt you sweetie i only got you two skeins because i this was pretty expensive yarn and i had looked up and two skeins would be enough for a tank top for you in this right. fingering way so right. I see where this is going. So I decided to cast on a new outline tank with this. Now I've cast on for the size two. <laughs> well, why? Oh, and because it's a smaller size needles. Should I swatch? Yes, I think you should swatch. You and you already cast on, didn't you? I already you? cast on. I've been knitting on it this time. I only cast it on yesterday. Oh, okay. I should well, stop. Right. I should stop and swatch. Yes. I, 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 I we could put it to a vote, but I, I think <laughs> I'm gonna stop and swatch. You really yeah, should. I should. Maybe. I should. And you know what? We'll wind this up now and, and I'll swatch. Just to swatch. Yeah, and I've done you, like I've done like can... four rows of the ribbing, 
And um, you won't have to, sorry, I keep interrupting you now, but you're, you we're all excited. You won't have to redo your ribbing. You can just adjust accordingly. And you'll, okay. feel so, and you'll feel so much better. Right. I was like, I'll just measure it up against this one, but I should just... But it's different yarn, different weight, and are you using different needles? No, I'm using this. So I want to do size three for the ribbing and size four for the body because it'll go quicker with size four. And I use size five, correct? I think you said you used size four. Yeah, I think I, I did. But this is going to be for this yarn anyway. Yeah, anyway. Yeah, you know what? I'll wind this up for you. Yeah. So yeah. we'll be ready to... So at least I... You can do a swatch tonight. How's that? Okay. Yeah, that and sounds And you know great. what? I might do a swatch too because I have a bit of a disaster cast on too. Oh boy. <laughs> I'm going to take this off now. Okay. <laughs> so, um... But I can, um, if you need more yarn for your sleeves, I'm not going to unpick this yet because I want to, I do want to kind of gauge it with my... That's um, a good idea, yeah. With my new one. But if you need yarn for your sleeves... You've got it here. Okay, thank you. I think that three quarters of a um, skein should be enough for the okay. sleeves. So um, let's see. So I have a couple of new I have a couple of new cast ons and then I have a modification and a repair, and I really and and a knit along. I don't know if we have time for me to talk about all of that. Why don't you talk about your modification and repair? And, and your knit along. I only have one more thing to talk about. Okay, so I since we've been talking about modifying and garment, I'll just finish up the garment and then after that it's moving into accessories. So, um, now I have nothing to knit on. Oh, keep on knitting the rib. You think so? Yeah, because you're not gonna, you can adjust accordingly, right? Right, I so can decrease. You can decrease or increase from the, after the rib. Okay. So, so yeah, you've got, my goodness, you definitely need something to knit on. Okay, so this is a top that I knit. Um, if, you, if you don't mind holding this up for a second, Natasha, while I look up the, the details of this. Um, it was a knit along, actually, with Christy Glass Knits. Oh, with um, Patty Lyons? With Patty Lyons. And I can't remember if it was 2020 or 2019. It's mm -hmm. called the, it was called the Roselle. Um, oh, it was 2019. Yeah, it started in April of 2019. And it's using yarn. And I'm just going to get the ball of yarn that I got in, um, we got in Norway. Um, another, modeling. Another linen. It goes really well with my shorts. <laughs> um... <laughs> Gosh, it's linen all the way, isn't it? Well, it is August. Yeah. So, um, it's yarn we got when we went on our Norway trip. Um, tin liner. Sand niggas. Sand niskan. I can't say it's it. It's been a while since we've had to say sand niskan. It's, it's really fine. I mean, it's a really fine fingering. It's 53% mm. cotton, 33% viscose, and only 14% linen. Did I say the, what the name of the pattern was? Rosette. Roselle. Roselle T. Roselle T. And since you're modeling, I mean, I love it. Look at this. It's got, it's also knitted in pieces. It's got these beautiful lace sleeves. Yeah. And then the front, there's a, it's another A-line, but the, the lace is lace panel. And you can wear this in the front or you can wear it in the back. Right. I think the back might be nice, actually. Yeah. So the thing about this is that it falls off my shoulders. Right. I mean, I wore it last week and I just couldn't, I just couldn't, I, I just couldn't wear it. It was, it was literally falling off right. my shoulders. Like you're not that much. Yeah. Which made me really sad because it fits everywhere else. Yeah. And I, and, and the whole, th so this was a very detailed um, knit along. Cause if you know, Patty Lyons, she's all about knit to fit. And she's very technical. She's very technical. And uh, I think the knit along was... I have to take this off. It keeps falling off. Yeah, take it off. Um, it was a pretty involved knit along in that patterns were released or, or sections of the pattern were released every week or two weeks. And Patty Lyons created videos and mm. there were instructions on how to modify it to fit you. So I think the reason it falls off the shoulders is not the pattern or the design, but it's this yarn that stretches 
So I'm holding up more yarn on a crochet hook. And what I'm thinking of doing is crocheting around here, single crochet, which will hopefully pull it in. And yeah. I did this on a sweater years ago, that white one I wore in episode one, I think. I had a similar I had a similar thing happen with a okay. hundred percent cotton yarn. Yeah. That it was falling off my shoulders. So I need to cinch it in. Yeah. So stay tuned for next time. Just be careful you don't end up with any puckering. Yeah, so what I'll do is I'll do it kind of gradually. Yeah. You know, I'll do uh, I'll do single crochet and I was hunting around because I knew I had saved a little bit over because I, I have another two two um I have another two of these, but so I don't want to bust into it. Bust into it, and and I was searching for this, and I couldn't find it. And then when I stopped searching, and I was preparing for the knit along, I found it. Nice. Of course, I know I'm monopolizing this, but shall I? No, no all good. So for the knit along, wait, wait. I just okay, before you get to knit along, I just want to show one more thing that I'm thinking of doing. So okay, another one of my birthday presents was this yarn. Mm. This is Trendsetters Yarns Transition Tweed, 52% cotton, 48% acrylic, and it's this cool gradient. And you can see here, it's very loosely... It's not really plied. Not, yeah, it's four so strands. loosely plied, it's not even plied. It's not plied. It's four strands held together. And the reason I bought this for Natasha for her birthday is because she loves teal and she loves tweed. <laughs> yeah. Am I right? Yes. Yes. So, Anna... My sister, if you haven't seen her um, I'll guess cameos, once in a while. Yeah. she has had this t-shirt that I have. Oh, it's this is a bought. This is not a hand knit t-shirt. This is bought. Right? This is bought. Yeah, she's had this. She had it for years, and I've had it for years. So it's we've had it for a long time. Um, Who and got it originally? Anna and I've had it at least four years in my closet, and I wear it every <laughs> summer. And I'm oh always God. like, this I'm always great. like, I should knit this. Oh, so really? I, what? But I haven't had the right yarn. The cool thing about this, you can see this is also some sort of drop stitches. But yeah. you can see it's not even plied. It's like, it's... It's exactly the same. It's just these fine strands together. Yeah, I think yeah. you can see. So I'm like, yeah. hey, this could make one of these. So I have to dissect this a little bit. Not not unpicking it, but just kind of... Um, examine it. Examine it. I'm pretty sure it's knit sideways. Um, really? Yeah. Oh, yes, you, you can tell by, yeah. by this, the stocking stitch. Yeah. So, um, mm. I'm gonna, I have to do, I'm gonna do some swatches, figure out if I need to purchase any patterns to figure out this zigzag or if I or can figure it. Natasha, you're gonna design your own top. I don't know, if, I don't know, if, is it, is it designing my own top? I think so. I guess so. So, I'm gonna work through it. I remember maybe two years ago searching on Ravelry for a similar pattern mm -hmm. and not finding one. Um, so I'll do another, I'll do another browse and see if I can find a similar one, but I can't, I can't tell if this is drop stitches or yarn overs or what, um, because it is, does have oh. a zigzag. I, you know what? I think you, this is a great example of buying a stitch dictionary. Oh. And I was watching Kia, Kia's bod podcast. Thank you for your comment, Kia, if you watch our <laughs> podcast. Um, she commented about my water lily because I was inspired. Oh, anyway, nice. Anyway, on a, she's knitting a top and she's consulting a stitch dictionary to have a flower motif for okay. the yoke of her sweater. And I think that you could consult a stitch, stitch dictionary. Yeah, that's a good idea. And figure out the stitch. And it, I mean, I could, I could kind of see what's going on here, but the zigzag gives it a, yeah. a, a different And then it's element. definitely picked up and done just ribbing two by two after um, on the hem and the sleeves, but it's almost like you can see it would be a pretty simple shape. Um, oh, it's a very simple shape. It yeah. looks like it was knit in pieces. Yes. And then seamed here and then seamed, in the shoulder. But you know, yeah. It's actually basically two pieces that are exactly the same. Oh, yeah. no, it's not. There's no seam. Oh, no, there it is. Yeah. But I bet I could do it in the round there. It's probably just because it's machine knitting. And then seam the top. The interesting thing is that the rib is knitted in the normal rib way, but then the rest is knitted sideways. 
Yeah, so that's picked so, up. And the top, the neckline is knit sideways too. The neckline is sideways. Oh, yeah. But the ribbing on the sleeves and the bottom is not. So that's definitely picked up after. So oh. a little more dissecting. A stitch dictionary is a good idea. Stay tuned. And so this is something to think about with this, though, is mm -hmm. it is a gradient, right? So, so it's going to change. It's going to change. So I had to think about it how that's going to look front to back sideways, right? I'm also thinking that, you know what, you could adapt this pattern and not make it sideways. I do think I'll want to have the color go up and down, yeah. so I might want to do that. I, I think that... Um, and if the zigzag goes the other way, that's fine too. These zigzags are going up and down, but if I, they go sideways, that's okay too. I think you could still make them go up and down because it would be a kind of a play on the fern and feather in a way. Fern and feather. Yeah, which is which is a zigzag. Um, wow, this is fun. I so stay tuned. Yeah. I I'm not I'm not quite there yet because I've got to get through my fold lines and my outline tank and a couple other things I'm thinking about. And it is a summer knit, so I'm not sure I'm not sure when it'll happen yet. But um, it's it's muddling. Okay, it, talk about your knit along. Okay, so the knit along is going to be. The unofficial, official, official, unofficial <laughs> knit along knitting um, the Mild Mania leggings by Stephen West. Oh boy, these are a statement piece. I, you know what, and I thought about making them last year when I was working from home in the winter. I thought they'd be so great to just wear at home. And then I ended up buying myself 100% merino pants from Banana Republic. Mm -hmm. um, but then Loretta from knit my way home mm -hmm. she mentioned on her last podcast that she was going to make these as a official unofficial knit along with joyce from i think it's ruby no moss cottage podcast excuse me i'm going to consult my notes because i want to get this right um Yes, Ruby Moss Cottage Podcast. Joyce from Ruby Moss Cottage Podcast. Um, she made a pair of the Mild Mania leggings last year. Okay. And she is launching this knit along. There is a hashtag, which Natasha, you can put in here. Sure. If any of you want to join in for the, for the winter, kind of a really loose knit along. So at a minimum, Loretta, me and Joyce are going to make, be making these. And... What I'm excited about is using up all my leftover sock yarn. And mm -hmm. so I have this really huge glass bowl, which I'm gonna show you now, which I got at our local thrift store a couple of years ago. It's heavy. Careful. <laughs> and I've used, and I have been using it to store yarn that I'm gonna be knit on. And this is where that purple yarn was hiding mm. when I was clearing it out. So, oh, here, so, I can add this right in there. Boom. <laughs> So these are all my um, fingering weight leftovers from socks, mm -hmm. you know, and, and maybe even sweaters. I think this was a sweater where it's less than 50 grams, um, but, you know, quite a bit from all different yeah. socks. And then in the middle here is a, is a little container with smaller amounts. So I'm thinking I'm going to use these. So the Mild Mania leggings, you use two fingering weights together and you mull, so you keep changing. Okay. And I'm gonna use, I'm gonna find a gray or a black to hold together oh. with these colors. That's kind of what I'm thinking. Okay. So I looked at Joyce's um, leggings and she matched the legs. Oh boy. Which took, which takes some planning and weighing. But I think I'm just gonna not bother matching. I, either way is, Cool. But I'm okay. really excited just to use up. Yeah. So this is my huge bowl. <laughs> That's great. Yeah, it's heavy. Um, yeah, I, I think it'll just be fun just to use these up. Totally. You know, instead of the other alternative is a blanket or... or, or and anyway, so that's, that's as far... I, I bought the pattern. I've collected all my yarns. I haven't gone through and found grays and blacks. I would really love to be able to just do this completely from stash right. and not buy any yarn. Yeah. Um, 
but I haven't and I am going to swatch oh another thing is so the mauve mania leggings are knit so that it's reverse stocking net is the right side mm -hmm. but I don't I don't like that look as much I'm gonna make mine modifying again <laughs> Um, I'm going to make mine so that it's the stocking stitch is the right side. Okay. And I'm hoping that's going to be a pretty easy yeah, the mar modification. Yeah, the marled look flows, I think. It, there is a different, it's a different look with how yeah. the marled looks on reverse, on the pearl sizer. Yeah, side. and I, I, just prefer the stock, I just prefer the stocking yeah. stitch side. Okay. So that's, I think that's it. Okay. That's, that's it for me. I think that's it for me too. Yeah. Um, okay. Oh, oh. Stash, stash acquisition? Um, well, I kind of mixed mine in because... I have, I have a couple. Okay. Um, and it's yarn, both of the stash acquisition I have is kind of colorful and it's from... Um, These are so cute and wet uh, so nicely. Yeah, so it's, it's the, the company's Earth Yarns and they plant a tree every time somebody buys oh. some of the yarn. And it's the unique sock. I've already made a pair of sock out of one of these, not these colorways, but yeah. So they it comes in two cakes, and they're perfectly matched, so you can make matching matching socks. And this is this is really this nice, is really soft, soft yarn, isn't it? Yeah. And what is the composition of this? And also, if you share a picture of your socks finished or in progress using hashtag, we'll plant an additional tree wow. for every post. And they're made in Turkey. Made in Turkey. And it's extra fine superwash merino and 25% nylon, but it's really soft. I mean, it's much softer than Regia. Yeah. And talking about leggings, I also bought this. This is the same company, but it's chunky. And this is a single ply. Is it a single? It feels like, yeah, it's a single yeah. ply. That's probably going to pill like the Jesus, but <laughs> it's like basically already pilling in the It's state. already pilling, but I, I've seen um, baby leggings made out of this. And Cute. there's like a few people that I know that are, well, one of my friends is going to be a grandmother. Um, so I was thinking I'd kind of enjoy making little baby leggings while I'm making my own leggings <laughs> Cute. in this kind of really just chunky yarn yeah and who cares if they pill right yeah they fit babies for like 10 minutes so. exactly <laughs> so that's that's it for my acquisitions okay cool well, this and was a jam-packed ep because it's a month's gone by yeah so hopefully we can do another one in a couple of weeks um we'll see but um cool. thanks for sticking it out for this longer episode and hopefully yes. you got some joy out of it and um hope you're all keeping well yeah enjoying your hobbies no matter what they are thank you so much for watching thank you for your comments please subscribe because i think we should have a four thousand subscriber giveaway yeah and that would we, we we're in reach we could potentially do it um hopefully we'll have one more podcast before fingers crossed we go to the oh, uk yeah, yeah. i know there's one giveaway that i owe to somebody in england that i will it's one of the old vintage um stitch um oh embroideries yep yep that i will post when we go to england hopefully that works out yeah um yes yeah, so take care happy, happy knitting. knitting until next time bye, bye.